Okay, I'm going to be calling this uh, regular meeting of council to order. First, I'd like to acknowledge that this meeting is taking place on the traditional territory of the Sonawas First Nation. Uh, first item on the agenda is adoption of the agenda. So um, just I'll make the motion, it's probably simpler that way, that the December 1st, 2021 regular council meeting agenda be adopted with additional information for item 9. Is there a seconder to that? Second by Councillor Savage. Any discussion on agenda? Okay, go ahead, Councillor um, Gusbar. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make uh, an amendment, and that amendment is to move items 12C and 12D uh, immediately following item 8, public input here. Okay, you want 12, can you just repeat that, Councillor Gusman? 12C and 12D. Immediately following the public input, okay. And a second by Councillor Proctor. Um, any further amendments? Or we can just vote on that amendment. So um, we'll call the question on the amendment. Or are you gonna, okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, just to say, I disagree with this. We're given our agendas and there's virtually no chance whatsoever we won't get through it tonight. So there's no reason to juggle agendas. We'll just take them in order as staff have given them in my opinion. Thank you. Okay, so unless there's any further discussion, I will call the question. So all those in favor and opposed, or any Councillor Savage is opposed, and it carries. So now we're back to the agenda as amended. Any further discussion? None. I will call the question. All those in favor and opposed? Go ahead, Councillor Savage is opposed. And the uh, agenda is adopted. Um, that takes us on to the start of the consent agenda. So, number seven of our agenda. So, I'll just make the recommendation that the recommendations listed for 7A to 7B in the consent agenda be approved. I have a seconder to that. Second by Councillor Gusselbrecht. And I will move to call in the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried unanimously. And that takes us to public input period. So I'll just read out the preamble to this. So a person is recognized by the chair to speak must first state their name and their address for the record may speak once for up to two minutes unless council results otherwise and are limited to providing comment regarding items listed on the council agenda for this meeting. This excludes public hearing topics which we don't have any. And uh, comments must be directed to the chair and not to be directed to individual council members, staff, or the audience, and must not include personnel issues. Should we do the registered one? And then, okay. All right, so we do have one registered speaker. And this is uh, Joan Jones. So Joan Jones, if you can hear me, if you can please state your name and address for the record, please. And you have My name is Joan Jones. I live at 7255 Millsmere Drive. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Thank you. I respectfully address the mayor and council regarding agenda item 9D, a motion to rescind the vote held at the November 17th meeting. There was no discussion to council uh, on, at council on this motion. There's been no recommendation from staff that the motion to waive a public hearing be discussed further at tonight's meeting. Like many residents, I am aware that a public hearing is due process for significant density changes to the zoning of a property. The property is currently zoned R1. The acreage of the property is eight acres. It is permitted to have two acres, two lots per acre. The motion to amend the bylaw would rezone the property as a mobile home park. This would allow an investor to purchase for development as a mobile home park and to build to the maximum permitted density. According to the OCP, the land would support up to eight units per acre, a total of 64 units. Normally a public hearing is necessary before third reading for a significant rezoning. Do the people of Lanceville want this land rezoned to a mobile home park or do they want to maintain the current R1 zoning? Residents should be given the opportunity to express their views verbally. For council to waive a public hearing would be to show that they do not wish to hear the view of residents. I respectfully request that council revisit this motion with discussion and debate. Furthermore, the accompanying text under item 9D in tonight's agenda states that, and I quote, 
The contents of bylaw number 290 were intended to include as a miscellaneous amendment matters which were felt to be convenient to include together as not being particularly controversial, but in view of the concerns that were expressed at the council table, as well as legal issues raised on the process." End quote. I and perhaps many residents am perplexed by the phrase legal issues raised on the process. Through the mayor to staff, please clarify, what are the legal issues? What process has raised these legal issues? Why are these legal issues of such concern that staff has taken the unprecedented measure of putting a motion to council to rescind their vote? May staff explain, please. Thank you. Jones, that's your time. And this is input, so staff will not be responding. Um, any additional speakers registered? Okay, thank you. So uh, I will call to the gallery. This is the uh, first time we've had a gallery in uh, quite some time. Um, so the normal procedures is uh, raise your hand and then come to the microphone. Again, state your name and address for the record. There is uh, some sanitary wipes there if you want disinfecting wipes. That. Um, Your Worship, I, I would like to make a comment about item 9B on the next agenda. Oh, so, name and address, please. Brian Blood 7075 that I wrote. It's not just. Uh, hold on just two seconds, Mr. Blood. Councillor Gus Brett. Uh, point of information was that 9B is in boy or 9D is in dog? So, thank you. It's not just us here in the gallery uh, waiting for the conduct of that particular item, but many residents are watching with fascination at their working personnel from the Attorney General's office and the office of the Minister of Municipal Affairs to imagine the next procedure. MLA Adam Walker's office also expressed interest. There is interest whether there will be five council members participating, and if a member is not participating, whether or not we will be told why. All of these promised transparency three years ago. I don't have to tell the people in this room that the integrity of not just local governments in Lansdale, but the integrity of municipal governance in British Columbia is in the spotlight here. There are consequences for how this particular item goes. Um, I notice Pravda that arrived today from the district um, that, for example, uh, to get water to the wind, we are going to need provincial and federal grants. Uh, we are not going to get provincial and federal grants unless the district is seen and seen to be clean. And that's not going to happen, as you know, uh, because there's five of you sitting here, I think you know what I mean. Additional speakers. Uh, okay, and uh, so we have Mr. Uh, Scott Mack. He is going to, I, well, I'll let you introduce yourself and the item that you're speaking to. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my name is Scott Mack with Townsite Planning, and my address is 6670 Elm Road in Lansdale. Uh, I'm here this evening with my client, Sheila Braden, on behalf of our application for a development variance permit for 7702 Lansdale Road. This is item 9G of your agenda. Uh, I don't have a great deal to say tonight as I feel that we outlined our proposal in the application along with the uh, supplemental information that was submitted today, uh, except to reinforce that our application for a shared house is rooted in family need and care for the owner's adult son who was seriously injured in a workplace accident a number of years ago and is not able to live independently. A shared house would provide him with semi-private, semi-independent space, but keep him close to his family. We understand that the access to this property does not meet the access standards set out in the zoning bylaw which is the primary reason for the variance request. However, we believe that we have demonstrated that the existing access can and it does function very well. And importantly, we have unanimous support from every one of the neighbors on the lower portion of Bullhorn Road, the same owners who share this access. Therefore, we hope that council will support our application. If you have any questions, we have to address them when we get to that at the time. Great, thank you. Additional speakers. Again, just state your name and address for the record, please. Warren Kirby. 
So I'm here, I want, I'm trying to decide what I want to really pick on here, but I'm going to go with uh, just starting at the top. The automotive repair is a definition that's proposed to improve personal watercraft. The definition of the auto automotive itself is containing the motor vehicles, not all of the motorized items. I can call a cat a cat, I can call a dog a dog, so why, why is this being changed in the definition in order to fit personal watercraft? Now, November 17th, staff makes a recommendation no mention of personal watercraft or boats. Why did the planner not include any such comments noting fundamental changes? The survey had a direct support or discussion regarding boat repairs, so how does it make it into the bylaw with no explanation in a staff report? During the council meeting, staff questioned the source of the amendment related to the boat repair, and neither of any members of council, or more importantly, no members of staff, including the planner, CAO, director of corporate admit, offered any up explanation or clarification. December, the agenda December 1st, the actual agenda, not the attachments, includes an explanation, background discussion. This is, does not happen on any other agenda, so why now? Normally this is part of the staff report within the agenda attachments. Why is there no staff report explaining both the concerns expressed by this council's table as well as the legal process concerns? If you listen to the audio, I'm not going to go into that, um, actually, I will. If you listen to the Chaser. audio of November 24th, the response to the Councilor Savage's amendments to remove personal watercraft from the uh, definition of auto repair, Council Fieser returns to Council Wilson and it states okay, Mr. they're going uh, to get Griffey. Fieser Brick is Mr. Here. Griffey, uh, we're not going to go there in terms of talking about conduct of Council members okay. during that meeting. Okay. Um, then I'm just going to ask one last question. Now, question would be that, that when they put in the word hull, there's no mention of it anywhere else except for when it comes on the 17th. Why is it? Why did it not, and why does Councillor Savage, why is he not allowed to speak? Why is he cut off by the, by the rest of the council? I just don't understand it. It's unfair. It's undemocratic. Additional comments? Or, uh, sorry, public input. Okay, uh, hearing or seeing none, I will, will move, unless there's any further registered. Okay. Uh, we'll move on in our agenda. So we have a uh, reshuffling of our agenda. So we have item uh, 12C coming next, which is the uh, approving officer appointment. So that's 12C of our agenda. Someone prepared to make that motion. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Wilson. That Frank Limshue, Director of Planning and Community Services, be appointed as approving officer, and further that Ronald Campbell, CAO, be appointed as deputy approving officer pursuant to the Land Title Act. Okay, and do we have a seconder to that? Second by Councillor Gesselbrecht. Discussion on the motion, so through to Councillor Wilson if you wish, and then through Councillor Gesselbrecht. No, nothing to add. Okay, hey, Councillor Gusberg. Um, I think this is fairly straightforward. Uh, uh, we had a recent departure of our former planner, uh, Director Kyle Young, uh, and um, fortunately, I say fortunately because we, uh, some of us know Mr. Limshu, who was the previous planner here in Lanceville, and uh, I have nothing but uh, uh, utmost confidence in the uh, Mr. Limshu to carry on his duties as a, uh, our new uh, director of planning. And uh, we have to appoint a deputy approving officer uh, and that uh, would be CAO Campbell. So I, I think that's pretty straightforward. I'll be supporting this motion. Okay, additional speakers on the motion. So Councilor Savage. Yeah, first of all, <clears throat> I'd like to welcome Director Limshu back to Lanceville. And for the past two years, the previous approval, uh, approval officer process did not request or require parkland in many of the rezoning applications of two to seven acres. The same attitude then showed up in the approval officer process, uh, for example, specifically a seven and a half acre subdivision 
which required no rezoning, but no parkland was required, so we missed out on 0.38 acres of parkland for a trail, greenway, or a nature park. Hey, uh, Councillor Savage, I'm going to interrupt you. I need you to speak to the motion, which is basically uh, the appointments. Sorry, unless you're going to come around quickly. Yep, I, I'm getting to the. I, I'm just prefacing uh, my point, please. And the OCP is full of references to trails, greenways, nature, not to mention the value of forest infrastructure to mitigate flooding, like we recently had an episode in most of BC or to mitigate air pollution. The OCP states any density bonusing should be accompanied by more parkland than the required 5% plus Councilor the community Savage, amenity. I need, you to, I need you to get to your- Okay, so to, to Director Limshu, uh, can you assure council as the upcoming approval officer, you will follow the OCP's prescription for trail networks, greenways, and parkland, as well as the age-friendly plan and take advantage of new subdivisions to acquire public land for trails, greenways, and parkland instead of continual cash and lieu. Okay, so through to Councillor Savage, um, I'm not gonna have Mr. Lingchu respond to that and I'll turn it over to our Director of uh, Corporate Administration to she could probably sum it up a lot more eloquently than what I can, but it's uh, just that the motion would be out of order, or the question would the be question out of is order. Out of order yes. It's uh, uh, council uh, is prohibited from influencing the approving officer. Uh, your your opportunity is through your bylaws, and uh, this is a request to appoint somebody. It's not an interview. So okay. speaking to the appointments uh, directly, Councillor Savage. Yes, yeah, so, well, in that case, I won't be supporting this since we have no assurance we're going to be getting adequate parkland for subdivisions that don't require rezoning. Thank you. Okay. Additional speakers to the appointment motion. Okay, hearing seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor and opposed, knowing Councillor Savage is opposed, that's carried. That takes us down to 12D of our agenda. So we have. Uh, draft letter, so I'll just make the motion that the draft letter of support for the Canadian Legion Branch 275-2021 grant application for the New Horizons for seniors be sent substantially in the form dated at December 2nd, 2021. Do I have a seconder to that? Second by Councillor Savage. Discussion on the motion. This one is pretty straightforward by all accounts. So um, through the seconder wish, Nothing, and through the rest of the council, additional speakers on this item. Uh, I will move to calling the question. All those in favor and opposed, that's carried unanimously. All right, so that takes us back to um, 9A of our agenda. So under legislative matters, we have bylaw number 287. Someone prepared to make this motion simply make the motion that the District of Lanceville Council Procedure Bylaw Number 141-2020, Amendment Bylaw Number 287-2021 be adopted. Is there a seconder to this? So seconded by Councillor Proctor. And we're at the adoptions. So there's no debate. So I will call the question. All those in favor and opposed. Knowing Councillor Savage is opposed, it carries. That takes us on to Bylaw Number 288 of the District of Lanceville 2021-2021. Financial plan bylaw number 261 2020, amendment bylaw number 288 2021 be adopted. Do I have a seconder to that? So, right, Councillor Gesselbrecht, this time. Um, again, we're at the adoption, so I will make the uh, I'll just call the question. Sorry. Um, so, all those in favor and opposed, knowing that Mayor Swain and Councillor Savage are opposed, the, the bylaw is adopted. <coughs> So that now takes us on to bylaw number uh, track here. Yeah, 9C. So we have bylaw number 289 that, that the District of Lanceville uh, 20 to 2022 to 2026 financial plan is bylaw number 289 2021 be adopted. Um, 
So thank you, Vice Councillor Kesselbrecht. And I will move the following question. All those in favor and opposed by the Mayor Sweeney and Councillor Savage is opposed. And the uh, bylaw carries. So that takes us into bylaw number 290. Um, there's a motion on the floor. Or not, sorry, it's not on the floor. Is someone prepared to? So, Councillor no. Wilson? Um, given that this motion has been brought on the basis that I may have been in conflict in a conflict of interest when I voted on bylaw 290 on November 17th, I consider that I'm not entitled to participate in this vote and I'm declaring a conflict pursuant to section 100, brackets 2 of 15, charge of treasurer. And as a point of order, please. Okay, what's your point of order? Uh, it's generally stated the reason why. why in the sorry? local government act, the general reason why. Yeah, I think he, um, well, through the director of codes, did you catch the the last bit? We'll probably have to watch it back in the video, but. Yeah, so, and I did believe he quoted the part of the community charter, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, but the reason for the conflict in the Local Government Act that says to state you're in conflict and give a general reason why. But the general reason why it wasn't stated. Okay, noted. Um, so that moves us, uh, so Councillor Wilson has declared conflict, so uh, it's left the meeting. I think uh, Director Coates has time on that, so it's 6.20. Um, go ahead, Councillor Gusselbrack. Yes, I'd like to make the following motion. Um, that the district that thought that the following motion C21 187 passed November 17th, 2021, be rescinded. Uh, shall I read the most the motion that was passed as well? Yeah, I believe that would be in order. All right. Councillor Gus Bart. That the District of Lanceville zoning bylaw number 180 2020 amendment miscellaneous bylaw number 20, pardon me, 290 2021 be given first and second reading as amended in section 2G1 after quote auto body close quote by adding quote hull. And further, that the District of Lanceville zoning bylaw number 180 2020 amendment miscellaneous bylaw number 290 2021 is consistent with the district of lanceville official community plan number 150 2019 and further that the district waive the holding of a public hearing for district of lanceville zoning bylaw uh, 180 2020 amendment miscellaneous bylaw number 290 2021 okay we have seconded by councillor proctor Discussion on the motion. So through to the mover and seconder. So Councillor Gusbrick, if you wish, and then Councillor. Thank Proctor. you. Um, through to staff. Is there a reason why this particular item was uh, included in the agenda for this evening? Are you worship uh, through you to council? Uh, it was brought to my attention uh, by. Um, Councillor um, uh, Wilson, that he may be in conflict. Uh, so uh, we got a legal opinion and the legal opinion is, is that uh, we put this back on the agenda for council to, um, to possibly, uh, if they agree, rescind it and then re-vote on the uh, amendments uh, without uh, small motorcraft. Thank you. Or, or actually motor repair. Yeah, well, there's, sev those, there's several items in here. Uh, okay, now I understand. And um, I recall this discussion at the last meeting and it went on for approximately an hour and a half. Um, <clears throat> there was an amendment uh, by Councillor Savage uh, I don't think that passed. Uh, there's another amendment by the mayor to include the word hull uh, before I think it was watercraft. Uh, and that motion passed. And uh, the balance of the bylaw was passed. So I can support this, uh, especially if staff have a legal opinion. Uh, 
that this bylaw might uh, be attacked because of a conflict. And I think it's our duty as counselors uh, to uh, protect the bylaws that we pass. And if there's a potential problem to deal with it, and I think rescinding uh, would, would uh, go a long way to doing that. And uh, later on, if we wish to uh, pass the non-offending uh, items, we can do it. But um, I, uh, what I don't support is uh, waive the holding of a public hearing. I think uh, at this point um, that uh, that should be on the table. So um, I will make an amendment to this motion. Uh, maybe just hold off, Councillor yep. Gesselbrecht. Okay. It's probably not in order to make an amendment to the recent. Yeah, yeah. Rescind for clarity, this isn't a motion to change history. It's not a motion to. Um, what am I trying to say? It, this is a motion to rescind the motion okay. as it was passed. Like you, you can't change it and then rescind it. Like it's. My yeah. apologies. I understand that. Thank you. Okay, additional speakers. So, Council Proctor. I don't have anything at this time. And through the rest of Council. So, Councillor Savage, go ahead. Yeah, just a, uh, a couple of quick clarifications, please, uh, through to staff. Uh, the other reason given for rescinding the bylaw was the potential need for further debate or discussion on the aspect of automotive repair. So I'm just wondering why this would be included as a reason for rescinding the first and second reading of a bylaw when third reading of the bylaw would provide ample opportunity for further debate or discussion of the automotive repair. Your Worship, uh, through you to Council. Um, the legal opinion that we have, uh, which we have in writing from our lawyer now, uh, he suggests that the, the best way to deal with it, to protect the municipality and protect the bylaw is to rescind it completely and start afresh with a new bylaw. And that, that's what you see it before you. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm just trying to clarify if this is new policy, that if there is uh, not adequate discussion deemed in first and second reading, if you rescind the bylaw, or if there were concerns expressed by some at the council table, if that would also be a reason to rescind the bylaw, that's all. So is that a question, yes. Councillor Savage? So, yeah. so in terms of policy, I don't believe there's a policy. So I think that's the answer to your question. Uh, unless staff has anything further to add. Yeah, so is this a new policy of these two other items that were used as a reason to rescind? So uh, I think your microphone was off, uh, Director Coates. No. Okay, thank you. Um, for myself, it, this is um, kind of interesting is in the fact that I feel like I simply don't have the information in front of me to make a truly informed decision about this. I have not read the legal opinion uh, to evaluate it for myself. Um, we've kind of heard now that, you know, the counselor may be in conflict. It's, it's one of these things that you either are in conflict or you're not, but it's been stated that he may be in conflict. So I don't know the full extent of the information surrounding that. Um, again, with a legal opinion, I, I don't know. I, I need to read it to really make heads or tails. If I'm not a, a lawyer, however, um, I believe this early in the process, if we're just at first and second reading, um, we're now considering taking some a substantial part out of it, in my opinion, which is the automotive repair, um, which doesn't sit well. Even the reasons that are provided in the background information, you know, the, uh, the, re the reasons provided that are, and that are not in parentheses is essentially, uh, um, where are we here? Just making sure I got this correct. It's, um, you know, talking about the controversial issue, that's what it was. And, and I felt at that meeting, the controversial issue was the blackjack um, uh, crescent, uh, or sorry, the blackjack um, road uh, 
trailer park. Um, that, that was the contentious issue at that meeting. Um, just watch it for yourself. It is clearly the contentious issue um, with respect to automotive repair and the amendments that surrounded that. Those were fairly mundane, really. Um, there's nothing significant or controversial about it at the time. Um, so for me, uh, you know, I don't know if it necessarily we need to abandon the bylaw at this stage. I think we can go to third reading and um, have further debate on it and uh, look at this further in terms of uh, perhaps uh, reconsidering the the waiving of the public hearing. Um, but based on the, the debate that occurred last meeting, uh, the majority view of this council was um, seemed pretty convinced that this is the correct direction to go. That, that was the will of council. It was a pretty strong will of council, in my opinion, um, regardless of what side of the vote. Um, we have to respect that. So I'll listen to the rest of the council's debate on this but uh, and make a decision following that. Councillor Proctor. Thank you. I have a question through you to staff. If we um, don't vote to resend this bylaw, it's only passed first and second reading, what will happen to it? Yeah, go ahead, uh, to uh, Director Coates. We have received, uh, first of all, I just want to emphasize that staff have a duty to um, act in the best interest of the municipality and the bylaws that we are presenting to you. So our opinion was in relation to, was the bylaw at jeopardy? The advice that we received was the cleanest method is to rescind that bylaw and start afresh with a new bylaw, bring out the issue uh, separately in the future if council wishes to as a separate bylaw. So the core question you're asking is what would happen to this bylaw if you do not rescind it? It would sit, it would simply sit there at second reading. Also on the agenda tonight is for council consideration, uh, a new bylaw identical to the last bylaw with the exception that it doesn't include the automotive repair piece and the hull. <laughs> and uh, so council could still proceed to process that bylaw. And However, we would be remiss if we um, brought, you know, started the process to move the other bylaw ahead uh, because it, it, we've received advice not to. Thank you. So, um, and thank you for following the legal advice. So I'm wondering if we rescind this bylaw, does it, is it struck from the public record? Like, do you erase the videotape of the meeting? Do you burn all copies of it? Like, or it, it, it's going to be part of the public record if it's rescinded or not. Am I correct? That's correct. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the, no, nothing has changed. And, and that is exactly why we said, no, there'd be no amendment to the motion. That is the motion that occurred at that time. We don't change history. Uh, bylaws are created. This isn't anything new. There's bylaws that are abandoned at different points. Sometimes they're abandoned through a rescind motion. Some, sometimes they're just sometimes abandoned because they're not moved along. Thank you. I think that's all I have. Okay, through the rest of the council. So uh, through for myself, uh, through staff, uh, maybe I'm just confused here. But uh, so if we do not vote in favor of rescinding the bylaw, is this going to sit at first and second reading? That's our advice. That's our legal advice and our staff advice. Okay. Um, again, for myself, where I'm troubled with this uh, rescinding it completely is is. There's parts of this that I, I feel in the background information don't necessarily line up with my historical account of that meeting. Um, and again, it has to do with uh, you know what was controversial in that meeting. And in my opinion, what was controversial in that meeting, and I'm not gonna get into a back and forth with uh, staff on this. Staff has stated it in the report or in our agenda here, but the controversial part was the blackjack you know, uh, um, trailer park. Uh, rezoning that was a controversial part of that meeting by far and that's going to remain in our bylaw 
and and why that isn't being taken out kind of puzzles me. So, anyways, I I, I feel like I don't have all the information and and I don't have the legal inf opinion in front of me and I get to see for myself. And I feel that uh, at a minimum, uh, before we even move ahead on this and maybe through to council, maybe this is the next best step is to get a staff report back, clearly outlining um, what happened. Um, you know, in terms of now we've heard this evening from CEO Campbell, um, the chain of events um, that kind of led to this. And, uh, and now we are here. So it's, uh, it's not a simple situation. And, um, you know, the public is uh, watching our move on this and uh, in terms of transparency and visibility of uh, what people see. And uh, I think it's important that we have more information available. So I would like to have that information. Uh, excuse me. There's no clapping. Thank you. Um, Director Coates and then uh, yeah. Councillor uh, Gusselbrock. Yeah, I just wanted to mention and not to speak to another item on the agenda. But uh, if the interest was in having further debate on other items in the bylaw, uh, when you consider bylaw number 298, um, the usual process is to give a bylaw first two readings and then to consider amendments. So when you get down to that one, uh, if you want to uh, give it the two readings and then get into discussion about I can't remember which section you, you uh, thought maybe shouldn't be in there, uh, then, you know, certainly that's something that can happen with bylaw 298. Okay, so through to uh, Councillor Councilor Brock, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, we have the staff opinion. They have a legal opinion. Uh, one counselor stepped out with an, uh, an apparent or potential conflict. Uh, this is all very easy. You rescind what we did before, and you'll get a second at bat um, follow in item number 9F, which is basically the same bylaw. We've had all the discussions on it uh, last meeting, so that should be fairly simple to uh, get that passed again and move on with the meeting. So um, I, I um, you know, I, when staff gives you advice, I don't know why we wouldn't follow it. And uh, when there's a vote, I'd like a recorded vote, please. Uh, through to, uh, actually, do we do, through the director of codes, I thought we had that struck from the procedure bylaw. Pardon me? That was taken out of the bylaw, or the procedure bylaw. However, I guess under Roberts, if, if there was a request, uh, that's council's decision. Sure. All right, uh, further debate, comments? Okay, hearing or seeing none, I will move to calling the question. So we're voting on rescinding. So all those in favor and opposed, I mean, Mary Swain's opposed, Councillor Savage is opposed, the rescinding motion fails on tie vote. And a recorded vote has been requested. I don't think we need to do a motion on that. So to say, uh, Councillor Proctor and Councilor Brecker in favor and opposed Mayor Swain and Councilor Savage. Okay, so that takes us on to um, 9E and we'll have to get the Councilor Wilson back in, please.
Okay, so we are on 9E of our agenda. So we have bylaw number 294. I'll just simply make the motion that the District of Lansville Council of Renumeration bylaw number 170 2018 amendment uh, open bracket uh, mayor of renumeration close bracket bylaw number 294 2021 be adopted. Do I have a seconder to that? Second by Councillor Wilson. Um, we're at adoption. So I'll move to calling the question. All those in favor and opposed? Okay, let's carry unanimously. That takes us on to bylaw number 298. So we have, um, so through to staff, how does this work now? <laughs> well, the, the way it's always worked, that at first and second reading, it's just the bylaw saying, you know, you, you if you get a mover and seconder for first and second reading, you would proceed to vote on that. That's not a debate. That's not where you do amendments. And then you can do the amendments after the second reading. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, go ahead, Councillor Gusbart. Thank you. Uh, I'll make the motion that the District of Lansville- yeah, so, Excuse me, uh, sorry for interrupting. I was a point of order, please. Oh, Just a point of order. Clarification. Uh, we are on- uh, Bylaw number 298 now, is that correct? That is correct. First and second reading. Well, I, I'm not sure how on earth we can go to first and second reading on this when it says bylaw number 298 is identical to, formal, to former bylaw number 290 with the exception of the removed of the new definition for automotive repair. So in my mind, a bylaw. Okay, so we're not going to debate it right now, Councillor Savage, but um, in terms of the bylaw, I think the easiest way of rationalizing this and staff, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a new bylaw. So it's, uh, it's just my point was that bylaw 290 is still active. It has not been rescinded and it's identical to this one. So how on earth can you pass a new bylaw okay. that's so identical just two seconds, to- And then yeah. through to uh, Director Coates. Just for clarity, these aren't bylaws until they've gone through four readings. So it's not unusual. In fact, I've even seen us take um, uh, property tax exemption bylaws uh, forward together and then council at some point abandons one of them. Uh, it, there's, we, we've got legal advice on following this process if, if you don't, don't wanna rely on staff's advice, but it's not, not unusual. Yeah, thank you for the clarification, appreciate it. Okay, so uh, Councillor Gusbrack, go ahead and make the motion, please. Thank you. Uh, that the District of Lanceville Zoning Bylaw Number 180-2020 Amendment Miscellaneous Bylaw Number 298-2021 be given first and second reading. And a second by Councillor Proctor. Okay, um, and again, discussion on the motion and as we've heard from staff, um, it would be out of order to consider any amendments at first and second reading. Is that correct through to staff? Yes, that's what council has in their procedure bylaw. At first reading, the bylaw will be introduced by title only and will not be debated. At second reading, the bylaw will be read by title only unless council resolves that it be read in whole or in part and to consider the body of the bylaw. Okay, thank you. All right, so for discussion, so uh, through to Councillor Gusbark as mover and then Councillor Proctor as the seconder. Yes, thank you. Um, as uh, Councillor Savage pointed out, this is a different bylaw and there's a section uh, that has been removed regarding the definition of auto repair. Um, we had uh, quite a bit of discussion last time. There was various parts to this bylaw. One was the trailer park off of Clark Drive. Uh, there was mostly other yeah, houses. Again, I, I do apologize for interrupting. Uh, I don't believe we've made the motion yet on this one. I interrupted while you were just about to make the motion. And, I believe and it was moved and, and seconded. And you've interrupted again. So hold on, hold on. Where just, are we? It was moved and seconded, I believe. Yeah, Councilor Proctor seconded, yeah. And then we broke into that this earlier discussion. So go ahead, uh, Councilor Gus Brack. Anything else? Okay, Councillor Gusbrecht, let's you. focus on the task at hand, please. Um, 
So hopefully we can skip some of the discussion, but we'll see. Um, and um, I'll be supporting this. Okay, through to Council Proctor, seconder. I don't have anything at this time. Okay, and through to the rest of the council. Okay, Councilor Savage, go ahead. Uh, yes, just for clarification again, please, through to staff, I'm puzzled over this uh, idea that we can't have uh, amendments to this at first and second reading because that's exactly what we did with bylaw 290 was it not we made a number of amendments or attempted to and yes yes council did do that and i apologize to the mayor afterwards that i wasn't on the ball and raising my hand and reminding council of the procedure bylaw and the past uh advice that we've been providing that it's very clear that you don't amend bylaws at first reading. It says bylaw will be introduced by title only and will not be debated. This is council's procedure bylaw. I don't think it could be any clearer. Oh, okay. So just to further clarify then, so all these other times over the past while we've made amendments to first and second reading, what you're saying is that was not in keeping with our procedure bylaw. I don't think it's been happening regularly. I think most times we have called, you know, advised council or tried to catch council's attention to advise council. Uh, but if council does something, then, you know, that's, that's you. Um, I'm not sure what it is you're looking for. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just trying to clarify the policy because we've done it before, that's all. Yes, so and it's what, not policy, it's procedure by law I'm quoting from. Yeah, so what you're advising and is not to do this anymore? Yes, as we have advised in the past, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so through to you, Councillor Savage, really this is the time if there's any specific questions uh, for staff regarding the proposed bylaw to ask those and then if there's any early on debate you want to present to council then you can do that as well yeah so we're permitted to discuss it then yes okay yeah so no i certainly won't be supporting this because uh one of the key things here is this should be going to uh public hearing it's uh, in particular the uh so Councillor Savage, that's the next uh, part of the, this motion. So that's uh, under, um, I guess it'd be F2, Roman, Roman numeral two. That's the next motion. And it's the second half of the next motion. Oh yes, well, that's fine, but I, I won't even be presenting. I won't even be supporting the first one because of this uh, public hearing aspect to it waiving the public hearing as well i don't believe in rewarding uh someone that's been in contravention of what he was advised to do as far point as of order. Could... okay so point of order has been called so uh councillor gaspar if we're going to be throwing personal darts back and forth uh, then i'm going to ask for a ruling uh, i would ask the chair remind councillor savage stick to the motion yeah so thank you uh councillor gus Rick. so through to you councillor savage i don't know where you're where you're going yeah no I'm I'm sorry, the so with this property did not abide by what it was asked to do back in 2014 it was in contravention of bylaws those bylaws were never these contraventions were never remedied therefore i'm not prepared to reward uh, what I don't consider to be a mobile home park in any respect whatsoever, that it be deemed an existing uh, mobile home park. So that is a key reason that I'm, I won't be supporting uh, this at all. And uh, that is the major thing in here. And then as well as I mentioned the waving, so I won't be supporting this. Thank you. Okay. So uh, Director Coates, you have your hand up. I, I just wanted to reiterate the importance of council uh, basing their decision on a land use issue, 
not on a bylaw enforcement issue. Um, so uh, we've received advice in the past, uh, even for board of variants, that when they're receiving, considering an application, you're considering the merits of the land use question. You're not uh, attempting to shoehorn in punitive uh, bylaw enforcement procedures. At council, it was always council's decision of what action, if any, you took at that time. And um, yeah, it's a point it, of order. It's not place, a land use issue. Order is being called, so they go yeah, I, I don't appreciate what I said being clarified. That way, it's something I do okay, not Councillor Savage, we're not going to have a back and forth between council and staff. So I think, OK, through to the gallery, um, I need the gallery not to be speaking during the council meetings, please. If you have something to say, please take it outside. Um, through to staff, again, I think the advice has been given, so thank you. And um, Councillor Savage, continue. Uh, yeah, no, that's it. It's just that I do not consider this property to be a mobile home park. That's why it's been going from residential one, which is two lots per acre to a mobile home park zone, is because the reason we were given that this was being proposed as this was deemed to be an existing mobile home park. And there, there, I gave the reasons why I do not consider it so because it's, uh, there's only been one building permit issued for uh, approved for, all, for everything that's on this property. So that's why I'm saying I don't deem it to be a mobile home park. I deem it to be unauthorized placement of campers, uh, uh, trailers that you tow with a car, RVs, uh, boat storage, unauthorized sheds with tarps. It just does not come rise to what I consider a mobile home park. That's why I'm opposing this because uh, it's zoned R1 and that's how it should remain without good reason to change. Thank you. Okay, additional speakers on this item. Uh, for myself, I, I won't be supporting first and second reading uh, simply for the reason I, I believe that um, this Blackjack Drive uh, mobile home park needs to be split out from the, the bylaw or the zoning bylaw amendment itself. Um, it is a more of a controversial part of this uh, amendment bylaw. It's, it doesn't belong in there. So, um, you know, we've done it now with automotive repair. I just think we need to be removing that piece out. And, uh, and if it passes, I guess we can uh, maybe entertain that at a third uh, reading, but I just can't even support moving forward with it as it stands. I, in my opinion, I believe we need to look at um, a lot of these, uh, we can do them independently. Um, now we uh, are considering waiving public hearings. Um, it's more of just a general housekeeping thing. I do understand that it's going to require some staff time to process some of these, um, you know, in smaller batches, if you want to say that. Um, but I think it's um, probably the easier way of going about it rather than trying to lump too many of them together. And especially uh, when we're lumping this one in. Um, so that's, that's all I have to say about this at this time. So Unless there's any further comments from council or debate, I will move to calling the question. Uh, I, I just wanted second to, reading. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify that uh, if council, after you voted on this, if council wished to put forward amendments, you have the ability to do that. You don't have to wait till third reading. Okay, thank you. Uh, through to council, any further comment, debate? Okay, hearing none, I will move to call in question. This is just on first and second reading. All those in favor? Sorry, point of clarification. Yeah, go ahead. We're just voting on I, right? Yeah, just the first half okay. uh, motion, yes. All right, so I'll move to call in question. All those in favor and opposed? No, Mayor Swain's opposed. Councillor Savage is opposed. That carries. That takes us on to the second motion. Councillor uh, Kesselbrecht, go ahead. The District of Lanceville Zoning Bylaw Number 180 2020 Amendment Miscellaneous Bylaw Number 290 to 2021 is consistent with the District of Lanceville Official Community Plan Bylaw Number 150 219. 
So uh, through to Councillor Gusbrecht, just being clear, you're intentionally leaving the second half out. Okay. Um, do we have a seconder to that motion? Okay, second by Councillor Proctor. Discussion on the motion. Uh, go uh, through to you, Councillor Gusselbrock, and then Councillor Proctor. Yes. Um, when we do the amendments, if we're amending the zoning bylaw, uh, we also have to decide whether it's consistent with the uh, official community plan. Uh, we've done this on other uh, applications, motions. So that's what this part of the um, uh, the motion is that it is consistent with the official community plan. Okay, and Councillor Proctor. I don't have anything. Okay, and through the rest of the council. So Councillor Savage, go ahead. Yes, uh, that's the essence of it. I don't consider this uh, in keeping or compliant with the uh, fish community plan. Uh, because as I say, the main item here, which is not, is the mobile home park. And it all comes down to, is this deemed to be an existing mobile home park or not? And in my mind, it's not for the reasons I cited previously about uh, not having building permits and so on and so forth. So that's critical to me that it's not compliant with the OCP, so I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Okay, any additional speakers? Uh, Councillor Proctor, go ahead. So I just have a question um, through you to staff. If we pass this without the part about the public hearing, that means we'll be proceeding to a public hearing? Thank you. Any additional questions, comments, debate, Council? Uh, can you please repeat that? The way the motion was made, where we left out the part and further that we waive a public your hearing. Mic, your, okay. Sorry, it is the next box is in the way. Can't see the light. Yeah. Sorry. Um, if the way the motion's made, this will be proceeding to a public hearing. Yes, public hearing. Uh, I should have prefaced that with unless you immediately follow this motion with another motion. Uh, yeah, they'll be through to council. Yeah. To, yeah. Okay, so um, any further questions, comments, debate on this? Okay, hearing none, I will move to call in question. All those in favor and opposed, I mean, Mayor Swain's opposed, Councillor Savage opposed, um, it carries. So there is a remaining and further that, so I'm just gonna put it out there to council. And if there's no action taken on, we'll just abandon that part of the motion. Okay, hearing seeing nothing, we'll move on. So that uh, takes us on to item uh, 12, Oh, hold on, make sure I got, got nine, sorry, nine G. So we have the development variance permit application for 7702 Lanceville Road. So I'll just make the motion. Um, sorry, yeah, it's gotta go to page 31. Okay, so uh, I'll make the motion that the issuance of the development variant permit number DVP 21-1 for 7702 to Lanceville Road be issued to Sheila Braden Sear and Kevin Lukovi. And that, I don't think I need the other, well, I guess, do I need the other part? That the owners would be permitted to construct, construct a carriage house on the property. So that's the motion. So seconded by Councillor Gesselbrecht, discussion on the motion. Um, I will leave it off, I suppose. Um, yeah, this one's pretty straightforward in my opinion. Um, I understand staff has uh, they've given us a pretty good report on this uh, one uh, one of the biggest concerns had to do with the uh, fire department and having access down, down uh, that road um, there's a number of homes that are on that road and uh, and the fire department's just concerned that uh, of having safe or a, I guess a easy access uh, to make sure that people um, have safe access to fire protection so um, so I understand the concern there and uh, and in our bylaws themselves, um, you know, the way it works with the uh, roads um, or I guess uh, strata roads is you're only a limited, have a limited number of homes that can have the strata road and, and so forth. So I understand the concerns and issues around this one. And, uh, and I appreciate the, the compassionate grounds on which um, this uh, application has come forward. So um, I will be proposing an amendment to this one, but I just wanted to get it on the floor, start the discussion and then hear, hear from council. So uh, through to council, um, I think Councillor Gusbrecht, you're a seconder. Oh, who seconded that one? Yeah, Councillor Gusbrecht, you seconded. So go ahead if you wish, and then through the rest of council. 
No, through the rest of council. Okay, Councillor Savage. <clears throat> yes, I'm highly in support of this permit. This application is uh, a perfect example of why we have a system uh, for variances. Every resident of the Blowhorn neighborhood, lovely neighborhood that it is, has given written support of this. There's also a very well written report by Townsite Planning, giving a well reasoned justification for the variance. So I certainly want to see this project uh, move ahead to completion. It's what makes a community uh, giving support to those who need it. So I'm all in favor. Thank you. Okay, additional discussion on this item. Okay, hearing none. Um, yeah, so my, my only concern about this one is just has to do with, um, you know, kind of going against our own uh, bylaw on this. And uh, with respect to the construction of the um, of the carriage house and and if should we run into a similar situation where we don't have the compassionate grounds um, we could land ourselves into a bit of a tricky situation as we could be potentially setting a precedent here so um, the amendment i'm prepared to make is that um, so the motion on the floor be a further amended by um, that a 219 covenant covenant be registered on title um, that the carriage house um, might need some help from staff on this one that the carriage house constructed is um, in compliance with the with the um, variance application i think that would be probably in order so through to director Limshu. Yeah. maybe it'll does that work? That a 219 covenant be registered just to make sure that the intended use remains should there be a future sale on down the road? Um, just for clarification, are you saying, are, are you requesting that the covenant uh, speak specifically to the intended use being for um, um, family purposes and not for uh, market rental? Yeah, so that'd be correct, <laughs> yes, yeah. So certainly we can we can have a section 219 covenant um, registered on title to reflect those conditions. Okay. If if that's the wish of council. Okay. So that, that's the amendment I'm wishing to make is that a 219 covenant be registered on title to, to reflect the um the re basically the request for the variance, which is um as you stated, Director Limshu. So do I have a seconder to that? So second by Councillor Proctor. Um, discussion on the amendment. So um, for myself, I, again, it's pretty straightforward because I, I think we're, you know, we're granting this on the compassionate grounds. Uh, that seems to be a big part of the application. There's huge support uh, for residents and immediate neighbors in that uh, neighborhood as well. Um, I just think it it doesn't open the door to set this unrealistic, you know, this unrealistic uh, expectation, especially when we're going against, uh, you know, the recommendation of our fire department. Um, and I just hate to see us be dealing with these similar uh, similar applications down the road. And and by doing this, I believe we're somewhat setting a precedent. So, Councillor Gusselbrecht, go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm a little bit concerned because there is nothing in the staff report about a covenant. There is nothing in the um, uh, town site planning's report about a covenant. And my concern is this, is the covenant going to say that only this family can occupy the carriage house? Uh, what happens if the uh, the owners decide to sell the property? That means nobody can live in the carriage house. So, you know, that, uh, and I'm not being facetious, uh, how do you word uh, Section 219 Covenant? Um, uh, because I guess what I'm concerned with is I don't understand the full extent of the mayor's amendment. Is this limiting to the one family? What happens if there's a sale? Uh, what happens if there's other family members that wish to live in the carriage house? How do you deal with that? And that's a question through to staff. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Director Lundshu. So as, a, as an option for, for council to consider, perhaps if it's the wish of council, we can certainly, staff can certainly um, go back and have discussions with the applicant. 
to see whether or not we can come up with wording that is satisfactory for council um, moving forward and bring the application back forward for consideration. Okay, go ahead, Councillor. So further to that, um, I think now we haven't voted on the main motion yet. Is that correct? That is correct. We're just right. on the amendment. Um, I would, uh, rather than making a motion right now, I'd like to see that we pass the motion, but we defer uh, the wording of a section 219 covenant to staff, which would then come back to council to, to, um, to consider. Now, having said that, I don't know if there's any time constraints in starting building that would hold it up because this will be our last meeting before the uh, Christmas break. Um, I don't know, maybe it's all flooded down there right now, but um, I, I'm, just, I'm just worried. I don't wanna hold up the owners if they wanna get going on it, but I think, um, uh, would that work? We post, all right. Um, I hear people shouting outside. I hear my name being shouted and I'd like uh, uh, the mayor or staff to deal with that. It seems to be a demonstration. I don't feel comfortable uh, if there's a, a, you know, a demonstration, not, not, a, not just a demonstration, an insurrection going out there because we all have to leave this building. Thank you. I'd ask that we take an adjournment of 10 minutes and deal with this. Okay. So Request, uh, a request for a recess is being uh, asked, so uh, that's fine. We'll recess till, I guess, uh, 7.15. That should probably be sufficient. And, uh, and we'll see what's going on. So, so if I could oh, continue. Right, so I'm gonna call this uh, meeting back to order, noting that the time is now 7.09, so through to you, Councillor Gus Bright. Thank you, I, I know I'm thinking out loud here, but um, what I'd like to see is that we pass the variance motion, and then if council would like to make the, the amendment afterwards, that staff come back with that section 219, I don't know if that'd work, or if my concern is unfounded. I, yes. would, I would defer to Director Limshu on that, but my understanding is once we've issued the development permit, there'd be no basis for the section 219 afterwards, like no way to compel the applicant to agree for the registration. 
But if council wants to postpone this, then staff can um, get some legal advice on wording uh, because it is a touchy issue anytime you're mentioning uh, people <laughs> in, in a covenant. Um, you know, I don't want to hold this up and I feel confident that staff could probably work this out with the uh, proponents. So I, I'm not, I won't make any further motion. Yeah, like I, I have personally, I have confidence in staff that they will work out an appropriate uh, uh, 219 covenant to cover the spirit of the, the um, basically what's being asked for for the for the uh, variance permit application. So, um, Director Limshu has already given us a taste of that wordsmithing this evening. So I have full confidence that staff will be able to work out some 219 covenant to again, capture the spirit of the actual, um, you know, why we're moving forward with this. So this is uh, Councillor Savage, go ahead. Uh, yes, my uh, view on this and with respect to, I know what you may be trying to achieve as we not do this at all. I think once it's built, the family, if it's no longer for a family member at some point has every right to uh, use it as a rental or whatever they choose to. And the reason for that, this is not a major variance. We're not allowing a carriage house on an undersized property or uh, to changing setbacks and so on. This is simply a, a road access issue and nothing else and uh, that yes the road down there may be a little less than the width required but that would affect houses without carriage houses in terms of fire department issues just as much as a as a carriage house and i think we can solve this much better by just with the next application uh, judging it on its merits. If it's just purely for a rental or financial reasons, then we could turn it down at that point. We still have control over these things. We're not setting a, a, a cemented precedent here. So I think it's important just to really keep this simple. It's not a major variance uh, whatsoever. It's just a slight preference as to not having too many more uh, uh, homes, abodes, and so on down at the bottom there. So I would really uh, support just leaving it as it is and uh, moving ahead without any strings attached. It seems perfectly reasonable to me and it's quite precedent setting that every single neighbor down there has supported it. So uh, I would leave this issue for the future if it gets to be too onerous a problem with too many people taking advantage of variances and carriage houses, but I don't think we're anywhere near that now. So I would just support this uh, clean and not complicated because it does get into complications in terms of uh, uh, supervising and, and so on. One can't monitor properties continually if they're suddenly a change of tenant in there and so on. So I would just pass it clean for the long term now, although I appreciate what you're trying to accomplish, Mayor Swain. I think this is better done on a case by case basis rather than a covenant on the property. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Wilson, go ahead. Yeah, I, I fully agree with Councillor Savage's assessment. I think that we're, this is seems to me like a one off and uh, we're, looking at this on compassionate grounds. So no, I can totally support this. I don't think that we need to get into the, to complicate it. Let's just make it simple. And I, I'll be supporting this motion without any covenant on it. Okay. Um, so through to council, I, yeah, I think, you know what, listening to the debate here, I think the need for the 219 covenant maybe isn't as strong as, uh, as I thought it one, once thought it was. Um, it's really just identifying, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, we could be running into a problem with other properties, not necessarily this one. I don't think the property owner is going to go through the significant expense of building a carriage house just to, you know, flip the house or do something like that. Um, so I, I believe that, you know, the 
the applicant is will be building this home and they're going to be there for many years so i'm not concerned about that it's just more the precedent uh, regarding other properties uh, down the road um so i will call the unless there's anything further i will call the question on the amendment so all those in favor and opposed noting that uh, i believe that's unanimously opposed um, now we're back to the main motion i will uh, unless there's any further debate i will move to calling the question okay so i'm going to call the question all those in favor and opposed that's carried unanimously all right jumping to 12 make sure i got it so 10a yeah so we have a local area service process for information so staff has um, provided us with our report for local area service it's on page 57 of our agenda um, through to counselors any questions through to staff on this uh, for myself uh, thank you to staff for actually doing this i um, was actually quite impressed when i uh, read this because it's uh, just laid out very logically and and i think any member of the public um, can pick this up and and make sense of uh, what a local area service is and how to proceed ahead with it. So again, I appreciate staff taking the time to put this into writing, and uh, and yeah, it's 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 good. So thank you. So I don't really have any questions, but uh, Councillor Savage. Yes, I'd also like to thank staff for the report. Very good, and uh, that's a real key. Is now the public has it all laid out, so they know basically the steps to get it done. That's the important part to me. Thank you. Okay, anything further from council or before we move on? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, 12A of the agenda. So we have Mary Council verbal updates. So we'll go to Council Augusta Breck right away. You have an update for us. Thank you. Um, uh, a lot of interesting reports come through um, the, the RDN, uh, both at the board and at the regular uh, other select committees like Parks and Rec, Solid Waste, uh, Liquid Waste Committees. Um, what I've attached tonight to, to tonight's agenda is a, um, uh, a snippet from a report, uh, which was a needs assessment and strategy report, which was basically the snapshot of the social needs here in the regional district of Nanaimo. Uh, and I won't spend a lot of time. This was from the November 23rd RDN board meeting. And the report starts at page 59 for anyone who wishes to read it in full. Um, page seven uh, indicates the uh, indicators of poverty in the RDN. Uh, how many adults between the ages of 18 and 64 are living in a low income home? You can see that for the RDN. You can see the Island Health Region, BC, and as well a target that the RDN would like to reach. Uh, I won't read through these. It's there for, for, your, for your reading. Um, page 11 is the, uh, a, a chart uh, talking about the social determinants of health here in the RDN and they list them, family and social support, housing, uh, safety and security, food security, education, and income. All of these items which uh, affect us in our daily lives and affect the other residents here. Um, the last page, uh, page uh, 64 of the agenda or page 135 of the report uh, talks about the uh, interesting statement there that the natural increase in growth, that is deaths versus births in the RDN or in the negative with more deaths and births in the region, uh, particularly in the Qualicum Beach, Parksville, Area B, which is Gabriola de Curcy, um, and that the current population of 179,000 in the RDN is estimated to grow uh, by the year 2026 to 1,000 to 193,000. The median age in the RDN uh, is uh, 51 uh, in, the, in the RDN, whereas in BC as a whole, it's 43, according to the 2016 census. Um, a quarter of the overall population is 65 years or older, and uh, that um, 
projections are that the uh, people over the age of 65 will be 35% by the year 2041. Um, there's a chart here showing where each of the municipalities and electoral districts in the RDN, what their mean age is. Uh, when you see at the bottom, Lanceville has a median age of uh, 50, uh, the, the median age is 51% of the population, which is, uh, in, in a, is right on the dot with the RDN. The other municipalities, especially Qualicum Beach, uh, have a 65% uh, median age or older. So for those who wish to read it, thank you. Okay, uh, through to Councillor Wilson. Uh, Councillor Proctor, Councillor Savage. Yes, thank you. Christmas is upon us once again. And uh, just a reminder of the following Christmas events. We've got Saturday, December the 11th, the Rotary Breakfast with Santa at 9 a.m. Sunday, December the 12th, the food drive uh, with the Rotary and the volunteer firefighters and Saturday, December the 18th, 2 p.m., the Christmas parade, which so I also like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, for myself, uh, I'll keep this pretty short. A um, couple of weeks back, I did a little presentation to the grade six classes at Aspen Grove School. That was uh, pretty neat. Uh, had an opportunity to have a nice fulsome tour of the facility and um, and their new gymnasium. And it's quite, the, if you ever have, a, have the chance to go and look at their gymnasium, it's quite, uh, quite a beautiful building. Um, excellent. So, and I was also able to um, be a guest and uh, to their Remembrance Day ceremony, which was, uh, was really neat to see. And there lots of creative things that the students did that day and to, to, um, to acknowledge uh, Remembrance Day. So um, other than that, uh, not a whole lot coming forward. Obviously this is our last meeting of 2021 and, uh, and how fitting to actually have people in the gallery this evening. So it's the first meeting in a long time where we've actually had people here outside from council and, and actually all of council here this evening as well. So um, I think uh, as COVID, we'll see where, the, where it goes, but uh, there's lots of turns and swerves and all that with uh, COVID and new variants and so on. But I'm um, hopeful for 2022 that uh, we'll continue to have uh, more people gathering here in our council chambers and as we conduct our business. Um, other than that, um, Councillor Savage has mentioned the Christmas tree light ups coming up. And um, other than that, uh, again, yeah, I wish everybody all the best for this holiday season coming up and uh, and we'll be back in 2022 um, in chambers and hopefully everybody will be back in person as well. So I think we've got a few more things on our agenda this evening. So uh, we'll move into 12B, which is the 2022 council meeting schedule. And, uh, and really, this is for discussion. We have the 9 a.m. Um, January 19, 2022 strategic planning session for council um, confirmation before proceeding to schedule the consultants. So staff has uh, the time and uh, date there. So January 19th at 9 a.m. to do strategic planning. It's really the will of council. Uh, what are we doing? So through Councilor Proctor, and then we can have a discussion. I have a question through you to staff. Um, how long are you anticipating the strategic planning session will take? You, your Worship, uh, through you to Council and to Councilor Proctor, um, what, uh, what we're actually suggesting now is that Council go forward and, and, and use that day uh, for strategic planning, but simply for two things. One, to prioritize your existing uh, strategic plans uh, items, and two to uh, to provide direction to staff concerning your acquisition of the new new waterfront park. Um, we we've, we've got some money budgeted for that to do some work, but we don't know what council's direction is as far as creating that park. So we'd like to go forward with that date, but rather than the strategic planning and hiring a uh, consultant, just have those two items for council to deal with. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Gusselberg. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Was that the uh, the Marine Park that we're talking about? 
Correct. Okay, any additional discussion? Uh, Councillor Savage, go ahead. Yes, sir, Chair to staff. Did I hear that correctly that we are not proceeding with the consultant this year? And that's correct. Rather than having a consultant coming in on January 19th, I have two items for Council. One is to uh, prioritize the existing strategic priorities that you have uh, so we continue working on them uh, through the next year. And also to give staff direction uh, concerning uh, your new uh, park acquisition as we don't have really any direction from council as to what you want to see us do with that park area. Yeah, okay, I certainly agree with that. So where it says in the agenda uh, for council confirmation before proceeding to schedule consultant, we can just ignore that then. Uh, the consultant part of that, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. That was my concern, the consultant, uh, Mayor Swain. I think can do a great job with that just on his own. So that's great. Look forward to it. Thank you. Okay. So um, through to staff, are you looking for some kind of motion or um, just by, do you just want yeah. staff or council to respond? I, I, council has already scheduled this date. Yeah. So as long as council's fine with that, uh, what the CEO has proposed, we'll just okay. proceed to plan for that. And uh, we just wanted to make sure that you weren't expecting us to hire a consultant sure. for, for a full planning session. Yeah. So really, I guess if, uh, if anybody feels so inclined to make a motion to hire a consultant, then this would be the time to make it. Otherwise, we'll just move on in the agenda. Okay, that's uh, hearing nothing. Uh, we'll move on in the agenda then. So we have under 13, introduction of late items. Any late items to introduce? Okay, hearing none. Moving on to notices of motion. Any notices of motion? And now we're into uh, public clarification. Is there any public clarification this evening? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to adjournment. So we've completed our agenda, so I declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you.